echoes tonight of the 2019 summer uh, crisis that the Conservative Party had that brought Boris Johnson to power. There were a few uh, core believers in Boris Johnson uh, then, but what got him over the line, what won him the leadership, was the fact that the Tory party was in electoral crisis. It had just come fifth in the European Parliament elections. He was the break glass in case of emergency candidate. They thought he might just be able to win them seats no one else could reach. And we're in that place again for a lot of Tory MPs. They know now better than ever what Boris Johnson's flaws are. Uh, but uh, although there, uh, once again there are some core loyalists, there are others who are get rallying to his side because they think he's the only one who's got that uh, electoral magic. One of the MPs who's gone to his side today is one who resigned this summer saying that Boris Johnson uh, had been damaging the country. They'd resigned from a, a position in the Conservative Party as a, a vice chair. And you do have to say, uh, there might be something to some of this. I've spoken to Labour strategists uh, who say that the thing about uh, when you're challenging someone like Liz Truss's, you know exactly uh, where her tanks are. With Boris Johnson, he pops up in different bits uh, of the electoral battlefield, and you can never quite be sure where he is. He might get some more endorsements from the right of the party on Monday that could seal the deal and get him into the, uh, in, into the final two or three uh, candidates. His loyalists tonight, though, are delighted. The man they see as the prince over the water is flying home over the Atlantic as we speak. A beach club in the Dominican Republic where Boris Johnson was snapped on holiday. He's now broken off the trip and is in the air heading home. Six and a half weeks after he left Downing Street, support in Westminster is mounting for him to move back in will be our, potentially our third Prime Minister since the general election of 2019. That means we have to think about that legit legitimacy question that the public will be asking themselves, and also about who could win the next election. That's obviously important for any political party at the time. So, you know, at the moment, I would lean towards Boris Johnson. MPs who swept to power in the Red Wall are amongst those who want Boris Johnson to run. His critics say these MPs are simply terrified of losing their seats and think he gives them a chance of holding on. They say the scandals that brought Boris Johnson down were blown out of proportion. I don't believe that um, Boris Johnson is dishonest. I think, um, you know, it's been trial by media, you know, with him. He's worked very, very hard for the country, you know, got us through Covid, got, got us the vaccinations. Um, He's got great vision. I think, I think a lot of people are worried at the moment. You know, people have seen the polls move very rapidly, very quickly. And I think people are just reaching for something that they know. They're panicking. Um, I think that's some truth in that. Penny Morden became the first candidate to declare today. Her supporters say she has a better chance of uniting the party than the other two likely candidates. But she was in the failed Liz Truss cabinet. She was round the cabinet table. She was in the room. Yeah, and, 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 and she was part of the, the cabinet collective uh, responsibility. People and I, and I, wasn't, I wasn't in the cabinet to know what discussions happened, what, you know, who tried to persuade the Prime Minister or the Chancellor to take... Well, apparently a, a nobody did. Well, I don't know. I wasn't there. Uh, and Penny so Norden would have told see, us, I think, see, if she had. I, I, haven't, I haven't asked her, but I am clear moving forward. Well, but, but before you move forward, Rishi Sunak said stuff. during the campaign that what Liz Truss was proposing was fairy tale economics. <laughs> And Penny Morden supported Liz Truss. Well, I think, but well, she's the person to succeed her. Well, well, I think I think she is. Rishi Sunak's campaign has taken the lead on declared nominations, but uniting the party under a figure who brought down Boris Johnson is quite a challenge. I'd be really happy to see, um, you know, if Boris did lose to Rishi, to see him brought into government. And vice versa? And absolutely. That I didn't work I, very I, well I, last I would, time. No, uh, he walked out the door. No, I think, He's barely speaking at the end. <laughs> no, I don't, think that, I don't think that's quite fair. I think what, well, he did walk out the door. We I think him. They, they, he also, they also worked together for over two years. This week, Boris Johnson has been calling some MPs, telling them his second regime in Downing Street would have a different culture from the first. But his rivals say it wouldn't, and there's an inquiry into lying to Parliament hanging over him, which could recommend he's suspended from the Commons. But he's had his chance, and he blew it. He lost the confidence of Conservative members of Parliament, and um, 
I don't think we should go back to Boris. Him returning as the solution is really, that, that would be going around in circles and, uh, you know, circles that could become a death spiral of the Conservative Party. And I think it's possibly the worst idea I've heard of in the 46 years I've been a member of the Conservative Party. <laughs> the cost of government borrowing went up today and sterling fell. Some analysts convinced that was prompted by Boris Johnson becoming the bookie's favourite to be next Prime Minister. I think everyone remembers Boris saying he was in favour of having his cake and eating it. And at a time when adjustments are needed to the public sector circumstances, you do wonder how keen he will be on implementing them. So that is, or at least it could easily give rise to the same sort of concerns as we had in late September, that the budget isn't going to be balanced and that uh, national debt will rise, no, be on a path where it rises indefinitely. One Boris Johnson supporter said the former Prime Minister had texted him before leaving the Caribbean. We are going to do this. I'm up for it. Boris Johnson's flight lands tomorrow morning. Gary Gibbon reporting. Now, Conservative members chose the last Prime Minister, but may have less of a say this time around with an accelerated timeline. Conservative MPs have until Monday to nominate their chosen candidate. If just one candidate gathers the support of more than 100 MPs, then they will be the next Prime Minister. If two candidates make it through, MPs will vote on Monday to decide who has the majority support of the parliamentary party. Similarly, if three make the ballot paper, MPs will vote on Monday and the least popular hopeful will be eliminated. Then a second vote will be held that night to decide who has the majority support of MPs. There will then be pressure on the candidate with the least support among MPs to withdraw. But if that doesn't happen, only then will the membership get to choose with a winner announced on Friday. Well, our policy correspondent Paul McNamara has been speaking to Conservative Party members in Maidstone. Across this green and pleasant land, over the summer, a small section of society picked Liz Trust to lead the nation. Lovely. Just two months later, Tory party members may have a hand in choosing the next Prime Minister again. Come on, Sally Ann, right now, who's your money on? I'd like somebody who's going to unify the party. I'm not going to say her absolute name at the moment. I am backing Penny Mordaunt. OK, Robin? I'm still waiting. We voted for Ricky Sunak last time, so he must be a con contender if he wants to stand. How important is it that this does go to the membership in some way, shape or form? I, I think it's, it is important. Um, however, there's a little bit of me that thinks for the ease of government and for the stabilisation that we need going ahead, I think this time I could have accepted that they made the decision up in Westminster. I, I personally think it should be a little bit like the election of the Pope. So they all get shot in a room and we wait until the white smoke appears. Robin, Andrew's happy for you to be shut out. <laughs> I am actually on the same side mm. because I feel that 180,000 members is a very, very small proportion of the electorate who voted Conservative. And if you look around this room, you'll see the members are all oldies and they're not representative of the whole um, uh, sort of uh, normal uh, structure of, of society. Checking the temperature among your association, mm. who do they like? Who could you imagine them unifying behind? I think it's quite difficult. I think Penny Morden probably is, a, is the unifier. I like her. I liked her. I did support her the first time round, actually. And then she backed Liz yep. Truss, and then I backed Liz Truss. So, but I did support Penny Morden the first time round. OK, do you think she could win you a general election? Yes. I'm not sure that the, 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 the country is ready for another woman. Now, that's a very sexist remark. What I would think would work is if she managed to get Rishi on the side and back in the, in the chancellorship, then there would be a very strong team. Mouse, why don't you think the country might not be ready for another female prime minister? Well, they've got rid of two before and now a third. Is there anyone that would just be terrible? 
<laughs> Rishi. Rishi, you think Rishi would be terrible? Yeah. Why? High taxes. I've heard all morning that there's gathering support for Boris coming back, but I'm not convinced that's a good idea. Yeah. Let, let's face it, Boris was the one who, who, you know, secured a stonkingly amazing victory, you know, at the last general election. Better, I suspect, than any of us thought it was mm -hmm. going to be. Mm -hmm. Robin, would you be happy with Boris? No, I wouldn't. He hasn't yet um, had the report on his performance with the various so-called misdemeanours. And when he does, then what would happen if he was in position? I, I don't think he should come back. You can't have two bites of a cherry. Well, he moulded himself on Churchill. And didn't Churchill do a great job when he came back as Prime Minister? So you'll roll the Good dice? Point. Good point. Yep. I was, we, we would hope to see that he could follow in Churchill's steps, footsteps and make Britain great again. Well, while the Tories wrangle with their second leadership contest in seven weeks, polling in former Labour areas is not in their favour. Amelia Jen has been to Burnley in Lancashire, a so-called red wall seat, to see what people think about the spectre of Boris Johnson making a return and the cost of living crisis. And Amelia joins me now. Amelia. Well, it's safe to say that people here, like the rest of the population of Britain, are suffering from a case of leadership election fatigue, even uh, whiplash. And with speculation about Boris Johnson making some kind of uh, comeback, you can add to that deja vu. Now, there's lots of disagreement about whether or not that would be a good or bad thing. Uh, lots of people here still holding out a candle for him, others uh, rolling their eyes at the very idea. But with energy bills on the rise, mortgage rates uh, on the rise, uh, everyone was clear about uh, one thing, and that was the return of stability. Call it the return of boring politics. Boris Johnson, the comeback tour. Sell out or flop? That will know soon. In Burnley, the jury's still out. Sixty ministers voted him off. And the public voted him in, in a great majority. Ellen. <laughs> that was three years ago. Anyway. Boris, for all his failures, the, the economy were in a better position. He had a staunch position on Russia. He's been sacked from every single job that he's done for lying. He was a journalist, he lied. He was sacked. He was a, a minister, he lied. He got sacked. And now he was Prime Minister, and he lied, and was found to be lying. Um, I think by this point, they should give up the ghost and go to a general election, because they've proven that they're incompetent. They've got no mandate from us. So to me, they can go in and do anything they want. But one thing's for sure. Well, it's just a catastrophe. Yeah, it's been ridiculous. Yeah, it's just At the moment, it is a circus, and I can't vote for a circus. You want boring politics? Yes, boring politics that just works for people. That would be lovely. How about you? Do you want boring politics? Absolutely. Do you want to see a return to boring politics? I... Of course I do, yeah. This seat turned blue for the first time in 109 years at the last general election. But the dizzying electoral heights of 2019 are all but ancient history, replaced instead with ever-present worries about bills and how to pay them. It's just worse that your gas and electric prices have gone up, and it's not just that, it's everything else on a daily basis, like your milk, your bread, your, your butter, etc. You're doing your food shop on a weekly basis, and instead of paying, say, like £50, £60 for a weekly food shop, you're now paying nearly £100. And then you're going to work all week to fund for things, what you used to do before in the past, and can't happen anymore. You're waking up in the morning on a day-to-day -day basis, like thinking, how the hell am I going to cope today? Is tomorrow going to be a struggle? Is next day going to be a struggle? They need to get a Prime Minister that's going to stay, that knows what they're talking about, that knows what needs to happen, that looks a bit from our point of view, from the people, instead of their point of view. While Boris Johnson's shadow looms large over Burnley today, no rave reviews from this Conservative county councillor and mayor. Uh, I think one can never look uh, backwards on um, on those that might wish to stand. Uh, I think <laughs> who that those, who, might, be talking about those who wish to stand... <laughs> Boris Johnson was a huge reason for people voting here. The first Conservative MP voted in for 109 years. It's undeniable that... Under he, very, very specific circumstances. Which were? Well, it was Brexit. People quite enjoyed his antics. Those of us, I think, that were a bit more serious about things did not, um, did not enjoy always being the butt end of jokes. 
Serious politics then seems to be order of the day. The Conservatives have until next week to serve it up. Amelia Jen reporting from Burnley. Well, in a moment, we'll be speaking to Conservative MP Laura Farris, who is backing Rishi Sunak, and Bob Seeley, who's supporting Benny Mordens. But first to Peter Bone, who has come out in favour of Boris Johnson. Welcome to all of you. And we're going to have to rattle through this quite quickly. Peter Bone, why should Boris Johnson be given another chance when he was drummed out by his own party just a few months ago? And let me just to remind you, read you a couple of quotes here from Tory MPs as they declared their lack of confidence in here. We've got Jesse Norman saying, to describe yourself, Boris Johnson, as vindicated by the Sue Gray report into Partygate is grotesque. Your current policy priorities are deeply questionable. You're putting the union gravely at risk. Victoria Atkins, I can no longer pirouette around fractured values that you represent. Why should he be given another chance? Well, we've discussed this on the programme many times. I, I think Boris shouldn't have gone. I think he's absolutely an outstanding prime minister. He, he got Brexit done. He fixed a broken parliament. He led us through COVID, first vaccination in Western Europe due to him. And, of course, he led uh, the European response to, to uh, the war in Ukraine. I have to say, by any objective standard, that's an hugely... But, successful prime minister, I right. think we, we need to have him back. OK, but then he's also got, he's got a few shadows hanging over him. Here's one. The Parliamentary Privileges Committee will rule at some stage, perhaps in the new year, about whether he misled Parliament, whether he lied to Parliament. If they rule that way, he will be suspended. You know, there'll be a by-election and you're going to have to do the whole thing all over again. Well, first of all, uh, I don't believe for one minute that they're going to find that. But they might I don't do. That, it's, well, it's, a, it's quite there a might risk. Be an earthquake, but you don't, yeah, but, but you don't why risk it? That. Why risk it and subject the nation because to this psychodrama all over again? No. He's an outstanding prime minister, and certainly here in Wellingborough, all the emails coming in from me from Conservative supporters want Boris back. When I wandered around the town today, people were coming up and saying, "Bring back Boris." People who are against him coming mm. back were were Labour supporters. So there's a groundswell. I mean, let's face it, the membership did not get rid of Boris. It was, uh, he resigned having won a But you can't vote. rule without the party. If you, the parliamentary party doesn't no, back the party, you, you can't rule. No, no, the party, you're absolutely right. It's the membership, it's the party. You're right. And it's not the MPs, it's the party, and the party will decide this week. And if Boris and, and someone else gets on to mm. the final two, the members will decide. And I will accept whatever okay. result it is. And I will serve whoever's Prime Minister. Peter Bone, you've had your two minutes and 30 seconds. I'm afraid I'm going to move on to Laura Farris now. Uh, Laura, you are supporting uh, Rishi Sunak. Uh, he didn't get the support of the membership of the party. So what makes you think that even if he gets the support of the MPs, he can actually unite your very fractured party? Well, because I think he's got the seriousness of purpose, the capability and the commitment to the nation. Uh, that's necessary at this critical time. And although he didn't win the membership, he was making the case for uh, sensible fiscal management, for um, tackling inflation as a priority all the way through the summer. And he was kind of written off, actually, by the end of July. It was said that Liz Truss ha you know, had 70% of the membership and he had just 30%. It ended, it ended up finishing much more narrowly and I think it's true to say that the more the membership saw of him through the various hustings and over the mm. course of the summer, the more they accepted his argument. And I'd like to think that they will see it differently now in light of everything that's happened in the last few weeks. I spoke to Redwall Tory MPs um, yesterday in Parliament who said if Rishi Sunak is the prime minister, they are guaranteed to lose their seats. What do you say to them? I think it's very difficult for any one individual to say what will or won't happen at a future general election. But what is clear is that unless we have a prime minister who matches the seriousness of the moment and who gets a grip on the economic crisis that we're in, then, uh, you know, no, no Conservative MP has a hope. And mm. I think he is by a mile, the most skilled economist in the whole of Parliament, actually. OK, but is his real problem, actually, with the electorate, also with the membership, that he's just too rich, and he's too rich to inflict the kind of economic pain on people that he has predicted is now necessary. 
Well, I think, look, that is the criticism that's that's always sort of been levelled at him. But if you think about, you know, everything he did, for example, when he was first chancellor, five weeks into the job when the pandemic hit and he designed the furlough scheme, he always had the people who were the most vulnerable at the forefront of his mind. In fact, he collaborated mm. with the Trade Union Congress, with the Low Pay Commission in everything that he did. So, you know, I don't like right. sort of writing somebody off because of a characteristic when in fact they've shown exceptional ability and skill in just the okay. area where we most All need right. it and I think that's that's what he has. I'm afraid your time is also up. Laura Farris, thank you very much indeed. Let's move straight to Bob Seeley supporting Penny Morden. I know it's like a game show isn't it but it's very serious. It is serious because we're talking about the leader of this country. Um, Penny Morden, when she was in the trade ministry was called Penny Dormant because she was barely visible on the job. In fact Lord Frost, her former boss, described her as invisible. Is that someone you want to run this party and this country? I don't think that's uh, true in any way, shape or form. I think Penny has the combination of personal qualities, likability, empathy, empathy, uh, empathy, ability to get on with all sorts of people, with ministerial stature. She's had three cabinet jobs. She's had nine ministerial roles in eight government departments. I don't recognise what Lord Frost says. I don't think it's true. She has a fantastic reputation with her colleagues. She has stature at the dispatch box. Dispatch box. And my blunt message to my colleagues mm. is if you want to keep your seats, we need a unifying candidate who can unify the party and we need a leader who can lead our nation. And the best person for that is Penny Morden. You talk a lot about her ministerial experience, but she was uh, Secretary of State for Defence for three months. That's not very long, is it? Yes, because we had a change. Yes, because we had a change in government. The fact is, she's had nine ministerial roles in eight government departments. She, she is hugely experienced as a minister. She has a very likable and attractive set of personal qualities. She won her seat from Labour. She is well known in Portsmouth North. Highly popular figure. Great campaigner. She is exactly the sort of person who Red Wall colleagues need because she effectively won a Red Wall seat before the term was popular. She sat around the cabinet table when uh, the so-called mini-budget was tabled a few weeks ago. She did not raise her hands and object to it, <laughs> like everyone else around the table, in a budget described as a fairy tale budget by Rishi Sunak. <laughs> Why didn't she raise her hand? It's called collective cabinet responsibility. Um, if every time you uh, stormed out of a cabinet for everything that you didn't like, cabinets wouldn't last very long. So it's something called cabinet responsibility. Uh, but she will set her own agenda. I am slightly concerned about this binary choice that we keep being presented, Matt, mm. between all change and no change. And now we've got Boris versus anti-Boris. We need to think in terms of positives as MPs right. and as a party. And okay. Penny will be the positive choice.